Hello everyone! Today, I'm going to discuss a very interesting topic about veterinary microbiology. Are you guys ready? What is veterinary microbiology? Veterinary microbiology is a branch of study mainly concerned with microbes that are responsible for causing diseases to animals. It is purely concerned with microbial such as bacterial, fungal, and viral diseases of domesticated animals such as livestock, fur-bearing animals, game poultry, and fish that supply food and other useful products. And how do you call the person that study veterinary microbiology? Well, we call them microbiolo- veterinary microbiologists. They are actually veterinarians that specialize in the study of microorganisms that cause infectious disease in animal species. They can specialize in several areas such as bacteriology, mycology, virology, parasitology, or immunology. They may also focus uh, their research on one specific animal species or group of interest. And they are often involved with the development of vaccines, drugs, and other animal health products. Um, They also provide professional consultations when requested by general practitioners and they also conduct uh, advanced laboratory analysis, um, even examining animal tissues and fluids. Interesting, isn't it? So they actually make a meaningful contribution to research and solutions for animal diseases. Animals provide uh, many benefits to people and uh, many people interact with animals in their daily lives, both at home and away from home. Animals provide food, fiber, livelihoods, travel, sport, companionship, and education for people across the globe. And millions of households around the world, you know, have one or uh, more pets and we might come into contact with animals in either urban or rural, rural settings during travel while visiting animal exhibits or while enjoying outdoor activities however animals can sometimes carry harmful germs that can spread to people and cause illnesses and these are actually known as zoonotic diseases or zoonoses these are actually caused by harmful germs like viruses, bacteria, uh, parasites, fungi. So these germs can cause many different types of illnesses in people and animals ranging from mild to serious illness and even death. Animals can sometimes appear healthy even when they are carrying germs that can make people sick depending on Uh, the zoonotic disease and they actually comprise a large percentage of new and existing diseases in humans so what do you think are the causes of diseases in animals there are many causes of diseases in animals knowledge of what causes disease and of how animals can get a disease helps us to know how to prevent disease and to treat sick animals First, we have parasites. Parasites are organisms that have to live on or in other organisms such as animals in order to survive. Most parasites are easy to see, although some mites and early stages of worms can only be seen under a microscope. And they can be divided into two. First, we have external parasite. Flies, lice, fleas, ticks, and mites can cause serious diseases in animals. And some live on the animals for their entire lives and others only spend part of their lives there while others only visit to feed. They can result in irritation, skin damage in animals, and some parasites can also pass diseases such as red water and three-day stiff sickness between animals. Uh, 
another one is what we call internal parasite. They can cause serious diseases and loss of production in animals. This could include uh, roundworms, flukes, and tapeworms. They usually live in the stomach and intestines but also in other parts of the body such as the lungs and the liver. Uh, aside from the parasites, there are also the so-called microbes or germs. So they are usually too small to be seen with the naked eye and only a microscope will enable us to see what you know a microbe uh, looks like. But just because we do not see microbes with our naked eye does not mean that they cannot cause diseases in animals. Some microbes are harmless. For example, bacteria that surround animals and people, they even live in our skin and inside our nose, mouth, and stomach, but they do not normally cause problems. Some microbes are even helpful, such as the ones in our gut, which helps us to digest food. Many different microbes can cause disease in animals, but there are four main types of it. There's the bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and fungi. Other causes include metabolic diseases. An upset in the normal functioning of the animal that is not caused by infection, poisoning, or feed deficiencies and usually result from the intensive animal production. An example of this would be milk fever in highly productive dairy cows. Another cause is congenital diseases and in some cases, animals can be born with a disease reason why it's called con congenital. Some of this may be inherited or passed on from the parents. Uh, this is rare and inherited diseases are usually seen at birth. An example of this would be a congenital hydrocephalus which is a swelling of the brain caused by fluid and can be clearly seen as a swelling of the head. And uh, another cause of uh, diseases in animals is the environmental diseases. Environmental problems such as littering contribute to some diseases. For example, you know, there are animals that can probably eat plastic bags or wires and can actually harm uh, the animal's health. So how do germs spread between animals and people? That's a question. How do you think these germs spread between animals and people? Because of the close connection between people and animals, it's important to be aware of the common ways people can get infected with germs that can cause these zoonotic diseases. This can actually include, first, direct contact. Coming into contact with the saliva, blood, urine, mucus, feces, or other body fluids of an infected animal. Uh, an example would be petting or you know touching animals uh, or when you are uh, beaten by by them or you know when you get scratches indirect contact coming into contact with areas where animals live and roam or objects or surfaces that have been contaminated with germs an examples would include aquarium tank water, pet habitats, chicken coops, barns, plants and soil, as well as pet food and water diseases. I mean water dishes. The third one is vector borne. Um, being bitten by a tick or an insect like a mosquito or a flea. Next, food borne. Eating or drinking something unsafe that are contaminated with feces from an infected uh, animal. Uh, this contaminated food can actually cause illness in animals and even to us uh, people, uh, including pets. Number five, uh, waterborne. Drinking or coming in contact with water that has been contaminated with feces from an infected animal animal okay let us talk about the examples of the common zoonotic diseases there are actually a lot of known zoonotic diseases from a to z 
but I will just discuss some here. Okay, so one well-known zoonotic disease is rabies, okay, or rabies. So this is actually a deadly condition that is transferred through an animal bite. And the virus is spread through the bite or scratch of a rabid animal. Dogs, raccoons, skunks, and bats are actually the common carriers. And symptoms could include paralysis, hallucinations, insomnia, and agitation. And without quick treatment uh, following a bite, um, the rabies infection is actually almost uh, always fatal. Okay, another zoonotic uh, disease is uh, what we call anthrax. So this is caused by a spore-forming bacterium, Bacillus anthracis, uh, which is a large square-ended rod-shaped capsulated spore-forming bacillus. They can be rap rapidly fatal to large numbers of livestock, particularly cattle. Um, it definitely affects uh, animals and humans can become infected through contact with an infected animal or by inhaling spores. Symptoms depend on the route of infection and they can range from skin ulcer with a dark scab to difficulty breathing. Antibiotic treatment cures most infections and inhaled anthrax is harder to treat and can be fatal. Okay. Third example of um, zoonotic disease is Lyme disease. So this is actually transmitted through the bite of a black-legged tick. Mice are also typically the carriers of Lyme disease and when a tick bites an infected mouse, it then carries the disease to any human it bites. And if Lyme disease is not treated, it can spread through the whole body affecting the heart and the nervous system. And even if you do get the treatment, um, you may still have the long term of uh, pain and fatigue. Another example of zoonotic disease is what we call as salmonellosis. Okay, so this is a bacterial infection that affects millions of people every year. Mm -hmm. And they can live in the intestinal tract of many different animals, usually poultry, uh, some birds, and even reptiles. And even us, we can get a salmonella infection if we do not wash our hands right after we get in contact with animals carrying salmonella or their environment just as such as bedding, food, or tank uh, water. Okay, next. Aside from salmonella, sal um, there's also another example, which is leptospirosis. I guess uh, everyone is quite familiar with this, since it's very common uh, even in the Philippines. So this is a bacterial disease that affects animals and even us humans. They are actually caused by bacteria of the genus Leptospira. And in humans, it can cause a wide range of symptoms and some of which may be mistaken for other diseases. And some infected persons, however, they may not even show symptoms at all. Okay, another example of uh, zoonotic disease is what we call as brucellosis or uh, also known as Mediterranean fever. So this is a disease caused by various species of brucella bacteria that are most often found in hoofed livestock such as cattle, sheep, pigs and goats and although domestic dogs can also carry the disease causing bacteria a person can become infected with the bacteria by consuming undercooked meat or unpasteurized dairy products or by handling infected animals and death from brucellosis is rare but symptoms may last for weeks to several uh, months so why do you think these zoonotic diseases are actually a growing concern? So one of the most simple reasons could be that people, we are invading animal habitats more often. 
which actually facilitates more interactions between humans and uh, animals mm -hmm. and when we carve into forest for logging or encroach on habitats we set up scenarios where we contact uh, wildlife on a more frequent basis do you agree do you agree with this statement and actually certain cultural practices may also be contributing to more zoonotic diseases you know putting pressure on the environment through hunting for example and development throws the ecosystem off balance and makes it harder for animals to survive as they were and the animals are forced to travel farther and search harder for food or mates and in this chronically stressed condition those animals are more susceptible to disease and more likely to spread disease to humans and such hunting practices also provide more opportunities for people to become exposed to these zoonotic diseases and uh, another potential reason why these zoonotic diseases are on the rise is that people are more connected to one another now than ever before right providing more opportunities for zoonotic disease to spread far from wherever it originated and we can say connectedness is a huge deal even places that are relatively remote are more connected now than they ever have been in the past and i can strongly agree with this with this uh, issue or with this matter so what can we do to protect ourselves and our families from this zoonotic diseases so the idea that animals can carry these viruses and have co-evolved with them over periods of time and then those things can spill over to humans is easy for people to be scared by it can have an outsized impact psychologically on our fear of the natural environment and our attitude toward wildlife but the relative risk of a new zoonotic disease appearing is actually quite low right and moreover there are clear step uh, steps you know that we individuals can actually take to minimize the risk of exposure and you know the impacts of uh, zoonotic diseases first off we can wash our hands with soap and running water so right after petting or handling any animal or right after we've cleaned up uh, our pets or livestock or handled their beddings and after handling uncooked food for our uh, pets or you know the food that we prepare after handling any pet or animal food or before preparing food or drinks for ourselves or others and before eating or drinking we should always wash our hands so let's try to wash our hands more diligently and of course we make use of soap and running water next um, number two we make sure children wash their hands after touching an animal whether at the petting zoo fair pond beach backyard or any other place that they get to interact with animals because they are also at high risk and uh, to prevent uh, to help prevent illness and injury keep children under five years of age away from areas where pets are fed and then make sure children stay away from wildlife and that they do not pet unknown dogs or cats without the owner's permission okay another ways so we need to keep our pet healthy definitely so we make sure our pet receive our pet receives regular preventive veterinary care including vaccinations so we need to talk to our vet to our veterinarians about the appropriate vaccinations for our pets you know and uh, flea tick and int intestinal parasite preventives and uh, as what I've said, we need to vaccinate our pets, including indoor cats against uh, rabies. And then we clean up after our 
pets and then store pet food separate from people uh, foods and feed your pets in separate areas from where we eat or prepare food for us and our you know for our families and of course for our health as well as your pet's health we do not share our food with our pet okay so these are just some of the simple ways that we can you know we can do to protect ourselves from these zoonotic diseases and uh, i hope uh, you learn something from um, the simple presentation that i have discussed with you about this uh, veterinary microbiologies and these uh, are my references so you can check the last three uh, references uh, more if you want to um, learn more about the different um, examples of uh, zoonotic diseases aside from the ones that I've mentioned so there are several more of the zoonotic diseases that you can uh, find from the references that I provided okay thank you so much everyone stay safe and uh, uh, be healthy thank you